Good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast retirement network. This is BRN AM for Monday, July 8th, 2024. And our top story today, figuring out adult ADHD. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Dr. David Goodman. He's an associate professor of psychiatry at the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Dr. Goodman, it's so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's a, it's a great that you're covering this subject. It's very important. Yeah, it, I think it is. And, and as I've explained to you, for personal reasons, I think it's really important. And I want to learn, and I think the audience wants to learn more about this. Um, let's talk, I want, to, I want to start at a baseline. So let's start at what ADHD is, if you don't mind, doctor. And then I want to kind of transition to adult ADHD. So what is attention deficit hyper disorder? So attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is historically thought of as a childhood disorder. It develops and shows itself as inattention, distractibility, forgetfulness, impulsivity, hyperactivity, uh, emotional eruptivity. And we see it in children. This is not just occurring on a Sunday or a Wednesday. This is something that children have every single day. And the parents realize this. As the child grows up, about 60 to 90% of the children will continue to have these symptoms into adulthood. We had thought that people would grow out of ADHD, and it turns out as you follow the children into their young adult and later adult years, they have the symptoms. So once you have ADHD, it tends not to go away. The other aspect that's very important is to understand that it's highly genetic. 80% of the cause of ADHD is genetic. So if we find a family member, a child that has it, we turn to the parents and say, which one of you sounds like you might have this? So it's very important. You don't wake up in the morning. A child doesn't wake up and decide to have ADHD. You don't wake up at 27, decide to have ADHD. This is something that's unfortunately God-given, uh, genetically determined. There are environmental uh, determinants that will worsen ADHD, but ADHD is something that you have, not something that you are. And that's very important. Yeah. And I want to, I want to get to that in a, in a few minutes. Um, how, how do you diagnose ADHD in a child or a young adult versus an adult? Is, is it different? Is it the same how do you, so if I'm, if I'm listening to this and watching this and I think, Hey, I never been diagnosed. I'm 30 years old, 40 years old. How, how would you figure out if you do, do have this? Well, this is a very important question because a lot of people will go to TikTok or Google. They'll watch videos on YouTube and everybody thinks they have ADHD because they're occasionally forgetful and inattentive and disorganized and they can't get done what they want to get done during the day. That's not ADHD. The person who doesn't have ADHD will say, I didn't have this three months ago or six months ago. The person with ADHD says, I can't remember never being like this. So it's very important to understand it's not simply the cognitive difficulties of inattention and distractibility. It's the fact that you've had them since childhood or early adolescence, and they've continued and impaired your functioning during the course of your life. Impairments include poor grades in school, not finishing high school, not finishing college, car accidents, increased likelihood of pregnancies, losing multiple jobs, fractured relationships, increased incarceration and criminal activity. This is not simply I'm occasionally forgetful and ditzy and a space cadet. This has huge negative consequences on the quality of life and the ability of the person to live their life as they would potentially without ADHD. And is it a lot, when you look at the, you know, there are 330 million people in the United States, get there about citizens. Is it, is it a large population? Is it a growing population of people that are diagnosed? And, and if it is growing, is it a, just a function of more awareness? There's more tools available to do the diagnosis. So the answer to the question is yes, all of the above. First, that there's a growing awareness of ADHD. ADHD occurs in the U.S. population at about 4%. To put that in perspective, generalized anxiety disorder occurs about 3%, and clinical depression occurs about 7%. 
ADHD is actually the second most psychiatric disorder in adults. And yet there is a paucity of training in professional programs, psychiatry residents, uh, PhD psychology programs, nurse practitioners don't get a focus on ADHD in adults. And so clinicians are really unaware and inexperienced on how to make the diagnosis. In the last 20 years with increasing awareness in top tier media and seeing articles in newspapers and television, people have grown aware and then they start thinking they have it and they go into their doctor and they try to figure out whether they do or do not have it. Well, Dr. Goodman, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, I wanna talk about how do you treat individuals or can you treat individuals with ADHD? You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts, so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Well, Dr. Goodman, thank you so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. Thanks, Jeff. Glad to be here. Let's get with it. Yeah, it's a great conversation. Okay, uh, Dr. Goodman, let's talk about treatment. Um, you know, people are more, uh, well, individuals are more aware about ADHD. They read it in popular press, but also doctors, cl clinicians are aware of ADHD and therefore can diagnose it. How do you, how t can you treat, or I guess you can't, make ADHD go away completely, but how can you treat it? So ADHD is like blurred vision. If I give you glasses and you can see better, the quality of your life is better. If you get accurately diagnosed with ADHD and effectively treatment, then your inattention, your distractibility diminish, your ability to stay on a task, get things done, get things done consistently improves. That in turn leads to a heightened sense of self-confidence. You start taking on tasks and challenges that you previously would have declined because you didn't have confidence in doing that. People around you notice that you're in a better mood, that you're able to execute consistently, show up on time and be dependable. And that then generates new opportunities because when you're consistent in the environment, people come to you. In regards to treatment, there are two courses of action. One is organizational skills to help manage time, organize tasks, prioritize what you need to do. The other, which is really critical, is medication. Now, the medications we use in ADHD are some of the most effective medications, not only in psychiatry, but in all of medicine. If you have ADHD and I put you on an ADHD medication, you're gonna notice a difference in two hours. And over the course of a few days, this is a clear difference. I go back to the blur vision. If I put glasses on you, you say, oh my gosh, I had no idea. Now, if you say, gosh, I'm gonna have ADHD for my entire life, do I need to stay on medicine? And my response is it's a quality of life. Do you wanna wear the glasses and continue to see well? You don't need to, you can throw away the glasses and live with blurred vision. The same thing is true for medication. So it's a combination of medication psychotherapy with organizational skills. And the most critical aspect that we mentioned in the previous segment was coming to accept that your ADHD or any psychiatric illness is not something that you woke up and decided to have. This is what happens when genetics mix with God, mix with brain chemistry, and this is the psychological experience. So being respectful that you have it, but not being a victim of it, and then accepting it's something you have, it's not who you are as a person. I think you bring up a really good point. And I wanna just focus on acceptance in, in two, two ways. The first is acceptance by others, your friends, family members, um, you know, because of the greater number of diagnoses, more family members, more people in society have, have come in contact with people, I would think, who have this. They need to be more accepting. Uh, I think it's just basic, uh, common sense. You just need to be accepting of other people's differences. Well, that's easier said than done, of sure. course. 
if uh, you believe in this disorder, then you'll understand and accept. But there's still a lot of stigma. There's still a lot of disbelief about ADHD, despite the fact the last 20 or 30 years of research has exploded around the world. So I'm respectful of people's opinions. And this goes directly to patients. If you see a clinician who says, I don't believe in ADHD, or I don't know how to, ev I don't know, I don't know how to evaluate it, then you need to see somebody, A, who understands it, and B, knows how to evaluate it. Because if you don't, you're going to get misinformation or biased information, and then you're going to be told, well, it's not a real disorder, and this is just you. You're lazy, you're crazy, you're stupid, and uh, you just don't show up on time. The other aspect that's important yeah. now in an era of health disparities is to understand that there are cultural differences in acceptance. So Asian, Black, and Hispanic communities are less likely to seek out mental health care, and they're more likely to psychologize the symptoms, and that is to explain it based on personality or motivation, not based on a psychiatric illness. We're working very hard in those communities to try to increase the education and the awareness, and I do think that we're having some impact. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I think it's it, you're continuing to advocate. Others are continuing to advocate. Uh, my last question for you, doctor, more on the uh, you, you talked about maybe some clinicians maybe don't know how to Id identify or diagnose it. Maybe they don't, quote unquote, believe in it. I'm paraphrasing there. What about insurance? Uh, you mentioned some of the therapies, some of the research. Do insurance providers, so I ha if I have health insurance with XYZ company, do they accept claims around these types of treatments and for this type of, um, that for ADHD? So insurance companies do recognize the ADHD in children, adolescents, and adults. They do cover the treatment, they cover the medication. So that should not be an obstacle at this point. That had not been the case many, many years ago, but it is no longer the issue. The larger issue is the shortage of some medications in the ADHD arena. And so Patients sometimes get their medication from pharmacy A, and then pharmacy A doesn't have it. They have to run to pharmacy B. And sometimes it's an administrative nightmare just to try to get the medication you, you need. It can be a couple of days delay, or it can be several weeks delay. And so this has been an issue that's occurred over the last couple of years now. And the DA and the FDA and the CDC are very involved in trying to understand and uh, improve the, the shortage in the distribution of medication. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we have a way to treat it. it you're just actually putting, you're, t you're taking off the glasses in your example uh, for people and, and now they, they're, they're blurred again. So uh, I guess more work to be done. Dr. Goodman, it's so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to having you back on the program again very soon, sir. Thank you, Jeffrey, glad to be here. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line and don't forget, for all the latest curated news in lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more, all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, visit our website. Hey, we're back again tomorrow with another edition of BRN AM. We'll have a very special guest and another important topic. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Thank you.